Let us pray. Help us pay attention to you, O living God. And do that with our hearts and with our souls that we may feel and understand your calling and your claim on our lives. We pray it through Jesus Christ. Amen. In seventh grade, I had a friend, and I call him Joey. Joey was fabulous in getting us wood, wood for the big stove we had in our classroom. But Joey was not quite so good with spelling and with math. But I tell you what, getting that firewood was amazing. Now, when I think of Joey, and I think of each one of us, we have different ways to connect with the living God and to open up and experience the presence. Some people are better with their heads, some with their hearts, and some with their hands. And it is described as different intelligences or different learning styles. You may be more visual, more auditory, more kinesthetic, more social, more private. So there are very different ways to exploring, but the basics come to head, heart, and hands. And when we talk today about God is holding your life, we're talking about hands and arms and holding. And I think sometimes our faith is too much in our head when we think of this is what you have to believe, this is what you have to recite in order to be a person of faith. It's basically you have to check off and everything, get all of that right. But the invitation here and the invitation from Jesus, as I understand it, is to go deeper, to go in our hearts to, and to explore faith with our hands as well. No wonder that God became real, tangible, incarnate in Jesus. So touching Jesus, Jesus hugging the children, Jesus being closed and touching those who were hurting and wounded in the healing. There is something about holding and touching that is unmistakably Christian and important. And when we say God is holding your life or God is touching you, we, each one of us, have the opportunity to let God touch and hold others through our hands, through our hearts, through our actions. And the question is, how do we do that? Wasn't it amazing, the stories, the experiences that Shane and Raven and Amy shared in the children's message? That's how we can hold each other. And through our holding, experience that God is holding our lives. And we participate in God's holding of others. That's what we're called to do. With focusing on baptism, it's the very same thing. We may think of what baptism means in our heads, which is good to know and to hear the story. But there is something to, more to it than the story from hearsay 
and the story we hear read and the story that we remember from the scriptures about Jesus' baptism. And maybe when we baptize a baby, we see and witness it. But there is more to it. The invitation for us is to feel it wholeheartedly in our bones. And that's why baptism used to be by full immersion. Imagine at the Susquehanna River, full immersion, that's a bodily experience that is so much more than the sprinkling that we do. So it's to be a whole experience, not just in our heads, but also in our hearts and in our whole bodies. Like all of creation around us is tangible, is visible, is experiential. And from that water as we come from the water of all creation, in the beginning God created heaven and earth and separated the waters and the spirit of God hovered on the water. It's that whole water of creation in that cycle. But it's also the amniotic fluid in which we're held in mom's womb. And it is in that water that we're held when we're bathed as babies. And it's in that water from which we are drawn and lifted into a new life with Jesus. And together with that visible sign of the water comes God's voice. And I invite you to not just hear it with your ears and with your head, but with your heart and with your whole being. You are God's beloved. God delights in you. You are the apple of God's eye. You are precious to God. God is holding you, this image of mom holding a baby. And we can always return to that. That is our foundation. That was Jesus' foundation. Return to the solid rock, to where we belong. Because there are other voices, other messages we get. Not good enough, not smart enough, not this, not that, not that. We get all these many different convoluted messages and voices and internalize them often and feel like, I'm not good enough this or that. Underneath that, return to the foundation of our faith. You, yes, you are God's beloved. God is holding you in good hands. I hope you will feel that in your bones.